hope you guys have had uh, an interesting week uh, i was very stressed about uh, coronavirus of course so much so that when i <laughs> talked to my therapist i freaked her out which has never happened so my therapist didn't know anything about it which is insane cuz you have the internet if you're not going to go to the internet i can freak out about stuff why do you even have it I freaked her out so much that she started getting upset because I ruined her mood. And I'm like, I'm not ruining your mood. Corona viruses. And uh, even a lot of my friends were getting annoyed with me because I was freaking them out. And I'm like, I'm not doing this. It's I didn't create the virus. It's not one of those things where you're discussing that you'll die one day and you like don't talk about it and then you won't stress about it. But this you can't ignore it. So and so uh, technically, I don't know if this uh, studio will be open. for too long and uh, just to prepare <laughs> i bought a mic the same mic and a mic stand so don't be surprised if the next episode is me in a bunker with the same mic i don't know how i'll monitor it without the ashar cuz i look to my right and there'll be a wall <laughs> i'm not kidding by the way i actually prepared for uh so i will divulge what else i bought a, i bought soap i didn't buy sanitizer cuz i am not one of those people who uh, hold and sanitizer i bought little extra soap by extra maybe 15 bars <laughs> that's all it's not soap is easily available okay and i didn't like extinguish any reserves i bought soap bought a lot of batteries <laughs> not not cuz i'm scared is this cuz uh, for the podcast the recorders need batteries and i bought dumbbells uh because <laughs> navin was telling me i'm freaking out <laughs> but i was like what if the corona virus mutates and people become zombies and then i need to beat them up huh also it was not a good idea about this game called days gone on ps4 which is about the zombie apocalypse so i think i watched that and directly my brain is connecting it to corona but uh, so i got some dumbbells so i can work out from home it is a big bummer that they close gyms i mean it's not a bummer like thank god they're doing something By the way, a friend of mine flew back from US yesterday and they didn't screen him at all. At all. So I was just like, okay, thanks for shutting my gym down and not checking the only thing you're supposed to check. This is a Bombay International Airport. Flew from New York. The hot bed did not check. I'm not making this up. Did you meet him? No, I didn't. He wanted to crash at my place. And I said no. Go, go to. So he's not from Bombay. He's from uh, uh, Bangalore. So good luck, Bangalore. <laughs> the moment I heard this, I told my parents not to go out. And then my relative was coming from Kerala, dude. And my relative wants to stay with my parents. So I'm just like, why do people have to travel now? Just shut the fuck up and stay in one place. And obviously, I understand if your job makes you do it. You. This is like my relative wants to come to me out of Bangalore. and uh, papa this guy was stuck in the us his flights got cancelled so he was stuck in new york for a couple of days uh so finally he got a flight and then he flies back and not a single screening da, 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 da. apparently there was a there was a letter you know that uh, if you come back from abroad they might quarantine you for 14 days guess that isn't happening so anyway hope i freaked you out enough <laughs> I have to share my freaking now with somebody. So yeah, uh, if this podcast does, we feel the studio is not available for good reasons. Like I think people should be cautious. I might do it from home, and that might be more interesting because I will reflect the quality with the house. So I'll just do the the show in my Benyan and Chaddi, and I can have snacks and drink, <laughs> which I can't do here. Uh, I mean, I do appreciate the lovely. Uh, this is uh, this is something your daughter will get home and you just support her this is like good good job beta good choice 
It's my, I'll just have my Corona juice. One sec. Ah, virus. It's nice. Cool. So technically what's happened so far with the show is every other episode has a guest or a friend. But I didn't for this episode. It didn't happen naturally. Like Kanan happened because I wanted him to be on the episode because I was nervous about this. And then Biswa called me up. There were a bunch of other friends who wanted to be on it. But uh, today I just did, I just felt like, you know, I just want to do it by myself. I also feel if I got another person, we would just talk about the virus. <laughs> and uh, I can do that on my phone. I don't need to do that with you guys watching. Let's start with the questions. huh? Why don't we distract ourselves? So Karan Sethi for us. So I make content. Spend hours putting it together and then re-watching it continuously while editing. By the time the video is ready, I can't watch it more than once or twice because I'm so done with it. The paradox is I lose my sense of judgment as to whether the play, the piece is actually good or not by the time it's ready. So yeah, this is a great question. And this is something we take for granted because you have to go through this process. So for example, the Netflix special that's coming out soon. Uh, I had to edit it for three weeks. It's a one hour show. Not only have I done this special for two years, working on it every other day. And I also recorded this special uh, as in by myself in video form. I've seen all of that. Plus I've heard the set, I've by hearted it to a point where my body movements are the same. Every time I do the joke, for example, if I do a joke, my hand is on this side. When I do the joke in another city at another month, my hand is still this side. Like it's that level of practice. I recorded that. I had to see the whole edit without cutting it to multiple angles. Choose the content. So you have to hear it twice or thrice. Then you edit the angles. And then at least you see the special... Oh, 100 to 120 times because you have to see it during grading, you have to color grading, you have to see it during sound mixing. Then you have to check the sound mix. Then uh, you have to see it during titles. You have to see it for, uh, you want to change your mind again about switching a particular angle. It is the worst process of it. So, so when I went to New York to do my writing course in sketch, I remember like three years ago, I had the same problem. I just didn't want to revise my script or my edit. I just wanted to finish it and release it. And I remember asking my uh, instructor in New York that I have this problem that I just do a draft or two and I shoot my things. Um, which is also a great problem to have because most people don't release anything. But he told me, just do four drafts. After that, you're allowed to release it. And that has been a helpful thing for me that... If I know, I think it's the ambiguity of not knowing how many times I have to see it. If I just tell myself four edits is max. So even with this podcast, I have done a rule where I only edit it twice, max three times. Uh, because it's a one hour uh, show. And it's a long, long recording. I'll go insane if I had to. Because the, the the truth is, you know that the more you, you relook at something, the better it'll get. That's this... There nothing illustrates that more than stand-up comedy. If you have a joke and you think it's ready, do it one more time and fix it. It just keeps getting better and better. That's why when comics release a special and then you do that old joke again and you, you've, you've improved the joke, but you can't do anything about it because it's already released. It's a great question. It's actually good that the first time you see it, you like it. Second time you see it, you don't like it so much. So then do something to improve it. I don't know if a lot of artists do this, but if... I like it by the 10th watch, then it's going to be amazing for someone in the first watch. So if by the 10th watch, there are parts that are boring you, even though you know that it's because you've seen it again, try to remove that and see if the piece becomes better. So even with this show, when I edit the long recording of me talking, I see it in the first time, I'm like, oh, it's nice. I'm talking and I'm answering questions. But by the second or third time I'm like okay this question honestly is not that interesting when I listen to it the third time and I remove it and from content I've always learned I've never regretted things being shorter I've never regretted I've always regretted a, a, <laughs> I know that sounds weird a, a, a content being longer is my biggest regret you never regret removing a scene or removing portions 
um because it honestly you think again i keep saying all my youtube friends when they watch someone else's video they give it 30 seconds max and then they don't like it but when they release their own video it's like 20 minutes long i'm like what is this self bias you won't watch yourself for 20 minutes don't expect someone else to watch it so that's why i was so scared about releasing this show i'm like 45 minutes a show but then i was like okay there is obviously content out there which is 45 minutes long but make sure that it's it's what would i see it that's always the paradigm okay this is a question uh, that i don't uh, answer because uh, i think i've taken it for granted and happened a long time ago but i realize i need to address it so the wind chime <laughs> your name is wind chime oh man you must be a person who has a dream catcher in your room 100% this is dream catcher type lady uh hi kenny you're doing great with simple ken looking forward more to your long recordings my question is how did ken and chip start tell us about it every sunday i wait for you to post ken and chip thank you that's so sweet It's really close to my heart so I want to know about it more. I know it's heartbreaking for you but Chipper is getting so much love and he'll always be remembered through Ken and Chip. I know that's quite that's quite nice. Thank you so much for making us happy with your work. It's heartwarming. What a lovely message. I'm sorry I made fun of you. <laughs> but it's out of love. So, it's a, I'm going to tell you something very sad. So, I adopted my dog Chipper from the road. Uh I was in Bangalore and I was in 6th standard and All my life I wanted a dog and my dad said once we get our own house you can have a dog. So we were in the navy so we kept traveling and then finally we moved to Bangalore and we still lived in a rented house so I still couldn't get a dog. A year after that my dad bought a piece of land and he built a house and then I was like finally I can have a dog and um that area that back then was like empty there was like a village close by and there was one bakery So we used to go I used to cycle to the bakery to buy like snacks for the evening and one evening I was cycling and I saw a puppy and a bunch of kids I think troubling the puppy and I was like oh man that puppy is in trouble and I couldn't stop thinking of that puppy and then I went home and I asked my dad hey dad I saw a puppy uh, can I take him home and my dad's like oh and I was like hey you said that we can have a dog once we move to our own place and he was like yep you're right So the next morning we took the car and we looked in the same area and I couldn't find the puppy. I felt very bad. And then we looked some more and we found the puppy. He was this small and uh we uh, found him and we took him home. And uh he was so small. I think he was too small like he sh- should have idly been with his mom. Um but there was no mom around. So we uh he didn't know how to drink milk. like that's how small he was and um i had to give him that uh, pacifier thing so to put him like a baby and has to feed him milk uh and he didn't know how to eat also so he put food in front of him he just looked at it uh and i think till 8 months he didn't bark so i had this whole anxiety as a parent like oh my god my child is not speaking and then at 9 months that fucker used to bark so much that he never stopped so then uh i raised him literally as my own child for seven and a half years and um, he was like my source of happiness and uh, then at seven and a half years he got a kidney uh, infection and the doctor said it's not curable you know those veterinarians are very brutal huh? like they're just like yeah dogs get this all the time and he's gonna die uh, so it was pretty harsh it was a very tough period I had to take him to the vet and had to put him down and I think I cried for a for a week. The thing was my dog was very physically strong and he was amazing at running and because his kidney was uh, infected his kidney stopped working so the toxins started going to his brain so he couldn't walk anymore and there was a point where he was in my house and he didn't know where he was and that is heartbreaking to see your dog lose his personality uh Yeah, he was in so much pain. And then oh man, for a week I cried. This was in second year, first year college. Um and he could have lived another 7 years. So it is just a shame. What happened was, so this happened 7 years ago. Um 8 years ago. And I think about him every day. 
and it was getting ridiculous every day i used to think about him and i used to see any dog and i used to think about him and i can't talk about him in stand up because it's a uh, it's very specific memories i used to share with my friends and every time i met another dog owner i could share these stories so i realized that i needed an outlet for all these stories about my dog because every day for 7 years i thought about jibba so i finally when i met bhagya who's the illustrator she um she had made a comic about missing my show in kochi and she had done it so well and then i reached out to her and i asked her to come for the show obviously and then i said hey, you want to make a comic strip and she was like yeah i would love to i said i have to do it every sunday cuz you know um otherwise it won't make sense i wanted to replicate that excitement you get every sunday as when i was a kid i used to read the sunday paper and the sunday paper had the colored comics so in internet where you can get anything at any time i wanted a regimented thing where you had to wait till sunday can't touch my face anyway so and then i chose obviously to make it up a chipper because this was my outlet to write down all the stories i had uh i used to talk to my dog a lot and uh, that's what kenan chip became the happy ending of this is that i've actually run out of stories so it's really cool uh, this actually worked i got over chipper cuz this is like the best thing i could do to you know to give a tribute to how what a wonderful dog he was and uh, yeah so now it's it's so nice how <laughs> people have gotten so attached to this fictional version of my dog who could speak and um, now my most I've, i've i'm i'm a piece of shit so sometimes people write can you show us a picture of <laughs> chip and i was like a bastard i'm like oh he died 7 years ago and people get so upset which is also ridiculous why are you upset my dog died but yeah it's it's uh, really cool how he's become loved and he's not even alive anymore to give the story on a sad ending we buried him in my lawn uh, in in bangalore because he loved that lawn and uh, he used to protect it like a kingdom so there's a lot of comic strips about chip barking at crows and hating any other an animal because he was like that so yeah i'm sure he's uh, in dog heaven reading all my comic strips that's why in most comic strips i make him look cool because it's the least i can do so yeah that's answering your question uh wind chime Okay so Khushi Mehta is having a midlife crisis. She asks is it more selfish to have children or remain childless cause in these unstable disastrous cruel times. What a wonderful use of adjectives. Uh is it right to bring new life that's full of suffering hoping for a controversial opinion. And second question is what are your favorite TikTokers? What a <laughs> right turn that was. Um Asher would you get a child into this world no really after corona is over <laughs> would you get a child i have no clue <laughs> no i don't know man it's a tough question because navin and i were talking about this <laughs> that you know in retrospect we forget how tough our life was we forget how hard schooling was and how hard bullying was i was bullied for four years in my school by a girl <laughs> in my van she was a piece of shit and i used to be a uh, used to be a uh, overweight and shy and introverted and man she just made my life hell for four years every morning every evening she just bully me and um, then i had puberty and then i became hot and she started having a crush on me and then i ignored her <laughs> life has a beautiful way of taking revenge yeah i then navin was like do you want to get your kid to go through all of that and i'm like yeah it's true that's it was quite hard growing up but now with this lovely a uh, chain of events that are happening uh with coronavirus and all dude imagine i can't even imagine if you're a pregnant woman right now holy fuck you must be shit if you are a couple having a child you're already you know in normal scenarios worried about things like what if the child gets sick or you know but now it's like just literally coronavirus going out oof I don't know man I really want to have a kid but I don't have a good reason but you're right though it's um it's a very tough time to get a child 
I think the main reason you shouldn't get a child if you're not financially stable, because a child is so expensive to buy uh, and I mean to maintain. And if you don't have the financial stability and the world is going to shit, I don't think you should have kids. But um, if you have financial stability and you live <laughs> on a hill uh, away from China, and I'm making China sound like a bad person, but they are. Okay, stop eating shit and stop having wet markets. You see, after SARS, bro, after SARS, don't fuck up again. It's insane. And you know, everyone's so scared of China. Like they're like, good, good job, China, for containing it. You fucking started it. It's like you left the gas on and the whole house exploded. But then you were very fast at putting out the fire. Why did you leave the gas on? And why were you bursting rockets inside your house with the gas on? It's so annoying how China literally makes everything. So we are so polite to them. Uh, obviously not everyone. I'm just saying like the government. Uh, I'm sure like Chinese people are nice. But the goddamn... After SARS, buddy. Why did you... Do? It just literally is a repeat of SARS. They didn't learn anything. So sorry that deviated. Finally, China has the largest population, which we might overtake. You mentioned a few times that although you had friends who smoked weed, you don't do it. So I want to ask whether you have tried it. And yes, then what were your experiences with it? And if not, how come you were not tempted to? Oh, P.S. would be great if you didn't mention me. <laughs> so I'll remove your name in the edit. So it is illegal to have weed. Okay. So don't have weed. I tried something similar that's not weed, but looks like it and feels like it, but it's not weed because it's wrong. I'm not saying I had weed. It's illegal. You shouldn't have it. But I tried something similar in America where it's legal. <laughs> and uh, I very consciously didn't do weed because I, uh, when I was starting to do stand up and th I did theater before I did stand up. And weed was very a prominent aspect of the circle I was in, the theater circle. They're all older than me. And uh, I could see how it was kind of taking over their lives. And in my college, it was very famous for uh, weed as well. And I could see how it used to really affect productivity. I'm not saying it affects productivity for everyone. I know a lawyer and when she smokes up, apparently she's more productive which is insane. Um, but I saw that and I was very careful not to get into it. Yeah, I, I, I'm very scared of things that can get addictive. And I know that weed is not addictive. I, I think it's just your behavior towards it. But because I'm an artist and because most artists get superstitious and have paranoia, as you can clearly see from my coronavirus worry, I didn't want to have things that make me think I'm lucky or make me think that that's why I can write. Or that will affect my productivity. Because I'm my own boss. I have no one to tell me not to do what I'm doing. So I very consciously... I did try it though. I'm not super extreme because that's also bad. I've not tried weed, that other thing. The other thing that's like weed. And uh, it was wonderful. It was nice. I laughed for 45 minutes straight. Uh, I've tried it four times. I've counted it. The similar thing to weed. It's not weed. And uh, it was it was nice and fun. But... I think you have to be aware of the kind of person you are and don't let it take over your life. Because I know a lot of my friends who do it a lot and that's all they do. And they seem to be fine with it, which is cool. But I don't want to live my life like that. I got a lot of questions this time about how I managed to do so many things. And it's because <laughs> I don't have a personal life that much. Very less. And second is I... I really try to see the hours in my day and make sure I make the most of it. There are times when I want to relax and I don't do anything. And that's when I occasionally drink, which I think is worse than weed. Uh, I think weed is far better than alcohol. Alcohol is legit the worst thing mankind has made. And it's so normal, normalized and it's everywhere. Like alcohol causes more deaths than weed will ever do. So... But yeah, there are moments when I just want to chill and do nothing. That's when I do these things. Because I also feel like you get groggy and you need time to recover. And it's so hard to be motivated and productive 
So anything that kind of makes you sluggish, uh, I avoid. I have so much rice, dude. Rice is my first worry, more than weed. But thank you for that uh, question, Ishan. Ishan, just be careful about what you do and just be aware of what part of your day is going to what. Homni asked you. So I got the new PlayStation games, and I think I played Need for Speed Heat for like four hours. But I was keeping track, and I think that's helpful when you keep track of what you're doing. This is also a great question. So Krishna Sindhuja underscore ask, since your career doesn't have a fixed income, how do you manage money? How do you deal with the fact that one month could be amazing and the next two months you could see no income? Have you taken gigs just to make ends meet? Of course, I've taken gigs to make ends meet. There was a point in Bangalore where I had to take a gig up because I didn't have enough money for my rent. I stayed with my parents, but I had an office uh, in Bangalore where I used to sit and edit. And I did this gig at, in someone's lawn in a resort, forty kilometers from Bangalore. So I rode in the rain, and then I did that gig. It was a bad gig, and I got like um, six thousand bucks, which was the money I was short of for my rent. I've done things like that. It's a great question because the oh no, <coughs> coronavirus confirmed. I'm kidding. When you get the coronavirus, you don't sneeze. By the way, you just die in your arms tonight. Anyway, so a lot of my friends who are freelancers don't realize the lack of confidence we have with our investments. Now, people who have nine to five jobs nicely left and right take loans. They take a car loan. They take a house loan because. From a very young age, their brain is used to the fact that you're going to get money every month, and that relaxes you so much. While all the freelancers I know who make way more money than my nine to five friends act more frugally than my nine to five friends, because in your head you're constantly worried that you won't get money. It's funny because if you look at your freelance life, you've actually been consistently making money for a while, but uh, it's very scary, and it's the biggest. pitfall of being a freelancer is your money is never regular and you have to be so careful about how you plan it um a lot of my friends switch from 9 to 5 get freelance job and then switch back because they can't handle the irregularity of payment and that's fair and that's the life you choose because i honestly feel it's a lot of stress and i can handle it but if you can't don't put yourself through it it's not worth it the whole point of becoming freelancer is because you want peace of mind and freedom and if you don't have that Don't do it. Um, what what I did is I always tend to use twenty percent of what I make for my expenses. Uh, I literally save around eighty percent. Now that's changed because I need to uh, spend money to make money. So I invest in a lot of gear and stuff. If you're in Bombay, that's harder. But just majority you save because, for example. your work is going great and suddenly a pandemic hits the world and you can't do shows for the next 2 months what do you do you go for the savings india actually is damn good with savings though in america man my american friends are horrible they have no sense of saving they spend everything even my dubai friends by dubai friends i mean two of my friends so i think india is already pretty solid about saving because i think we grew up with the fact that If you're gonna lose everything. It's a great attitude to have. <laughs> I twenty percent is what I used in college. Used to spend and skip saving, 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 which is a habit that has become hardwired into me, which kind of keeps making fun of that I don't spend. So I'll keep saving, saving, saving. And suddenly I'll buy off a bike. <laughs> That's how I equalize it. But thank you for the question, Krishna. And I think it's very important to save when you don't have money to spend. And this whole. life is short and you should spend it and all is bullshit life is very long okay most of our lives are super long so you need to really plan it out chumma these people give some tatty advice so this is like one gossip question anyway so i just wanted to know your opinion on dating one of your friends what do you think will what do you think will that jeopardize our friendship uh uh let me guess mm, yes it will cuz first of all the friendship doesn't exist anymore cuz you're dating them uh, also what's your opinion on being friends with your ex Ooh. 
Sending you loads of love. Don't mention me because obviously, okay, I have to beep you out as well. Um, Shay, I can't even make my travels joke now. It is such a funny joke. I think it's a very, 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 very bad idea to date your friends. I know you don't plan it, but just don't date your friends. Don't do it because you think this is about you. It's not. It's about everybody. If you date your friend and then you break up, you've made it awkward for everyone. And now you split the group into two. You think you haven't. It it has split into two. And also, do you want to find out who they like more, you or the person you were dating? Because if they don't like you, they're going to choose your friend or, and vice versa. Don't do that to someone. I know it's hard to find people, but just don't cannibalize your friendships. There's a reason they're your friends. And I know a lot of freaking people will be like, Oh, I'm so lucky I married a friend. <laughs> no, 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 you compromised. <laughs> you didn't find anybody. So you're like, yeah, actually, my friend only I loved. You didn't love. All this while fucking you didn't date them. Suddenly you did. Yeah, because you compromised and gave up. Uh, leave your friends alone. Let them be your friends. And um, it's so weird. Like, ugh, I can't, I can't kiss my friend. Yuck. And what's your opinion on being friends with your ex? Uh, this is a tough one. Because I'm not friends with any of my exes. Uh, which sounds dramatic, but I think it was... It just happened because after you date them for so long, it's weird to just be friends again. And I know that a lot of people are friends with their ex. And it's great if you can do it. I don't know how you do it. It's, it's amazing. Two reasons is that, one, we both decided to be too emotionally taxing to be friends. Because, you know... You must be like Gautam Buddha level of enlightened to sever the emotional love and be friends and watch them date other people. It's quite cool if you can do it. Or second, you're dead inside. But I feel like my friend Pratik and I were discussing this. It just makes your future relationships less dramatic. And that's not the only reason, but like that's one of the pros is you just leave that life behind. And I also know that if your girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever, was friends with your friend circle, then it gets complicated, I know. But hopefully they choose you. <laughs> but it's just good. Like if you're dating someone new, they don't have to deal with your ex. And I don't think you have to cut them off. You can just be like in acquaintance terms. Like obviously if they need your help and... Once in a while, they reach out to you. It's, I think it's okay, but I'm like, why? Just make make more friends. And I don't know how people seamlessly. It's quite cool how I have. So my friend won't name her. So she's still friends with her ex, and her ex and her new boyfriend hang out together, which just blows my mind. It blows my mind. And I think it's supremely weird. Also, like, I'm jealous of her boyfriend because I'm so insecure. I'm not going to sit next to my girlfriend's ex-boyfriend. Get lost. I can't sit with anyone who's seen my girlfriend naked, dude. It's just weird. It's super weird. For me. You know what? I'm not going to be diplomatic. It's weird. Okay? You, you guys just... Why? There's no limitation of people in the world. Dating your friends, dating your friends' exes, being in touch with your ex. Why so much? Just simplify your life. It's just... Hey, Kenny, my question for you is, have you dated any fan of yours? Just curious to know how the date would go about since your date would know so much about you. Nope, I haven't. And it's weird. I went on Tinder because I saw you on an... Facebook ad thinking I could match with you. <laughs> that didn't happen, obviously. But I did end up meeting this guy I would marry. Wow! Man! That's awesome. And today we are married only because of you. Really? Only because of me? <laughs> That's weird. I wasn't interested in dating apps and you were the only reason I went on one. So thank you. P.S. Two, <laughs> okay. Please station two. Would you have come to the wedding though? Just wondering and kicking myself. What a great idea that was, and not for thinking it then. You know what? Legit, I would have come because 
this is i would not want to be your husband no offense but i don't want to hear for the rest of my life that you married me because of some dude who does jokes on youtube so it's very flattering but i would be very insecure that you were looking for some other guy and then you f- settle with me so uh very i'm very happy you found someone that you got married to on tinder also damn dude i feel you know what ashwini that you're the kind of person that would have met anyone anywhere and i think tinder was just a tool you seem like you a normal and you can just like meet someone and connect with them and marry them i don't think tinder had much to do with it because i know a lot of people on tinder who haven't met shit so i think uh, kudos to you for making it work and i would recommend that you don't keep reminding him that it was me that made you marry this guy i think that's little emasculating you know um when i do shows and i take photos at the end of my shows some guys come up to me like hey my girlfriend is a big fan of you i don't watch comedy but i i appreciate what you do i just got her to see you that's amazing i would never do that for my girlfriend if my girlfriend was like hey trevor noah has come he's so he's so cute let's go watch it i'm like you go no why are you asking me to take you to laugh at some other guys jokes cuz like chandler from friends jokes is a very integral part of my self worth if i make you laugh that's a big deal for me and if some other guy can make you laugh harder i will get jealous so it boggles my mind that these guys very sweet guys who they take the girlfriends to watch me that's incredible bro i could never do that uh, i would be very insecure so kudos to you guys i recently a friend yesterday i i told her to watch she was asking what movies to watch and i was like oh you could watch you know rewatch some classics she's like what like back to the future and she said i've not seen back to the future which blew my mind asher have you seen back to the future yeah rubik have you seen back to the future you have don't lie to me <laughs> How can you not see you have right you have right yeah. okay i'm sorry i can't talk to you if you haven't how can you not see back to the future dude how can you not see it really okay this next one will be a big one matrix you've seen matrix right rubik have you seen matrix thank god so one of my friends girlfriends <laughs> she had not seen the matrix and we lost our shit we were like how can you not have seen the matrix and what's so annoying is they don't realize what a big deal it is so we made her see the matrix so it is me my friend whose girlfriend she was and two other guy friends and we sat in a couch and we set it up 10 minutes since she starts feeling sleepy dude and we were just like and just not to disrespect the film we saw it and we finished it back to the future if you're not saying no is a shame shame on you if you're not seen it there like a lot of these movies like i'll understand if you're not seen indiana jones indiana jones is a classic but if you've not seen it i completely understand because it's one of those things that not many people in india know about it have you seen indiana jones you have rubik have you seen the first one so i can't hear you just randomly in star wars please close the mic asher please close it <laughs> randomly in star movies it seems <sighs> this is a state of this is good only this corona is coming good good <laughs> should wipe out all these people who don't <laughs> watch all this it's ridiculous man how people react when you don't watch harry potter and all i'm like i've seen harry potter if not seen back to the future then shame on you this titanic also i think everyone's seen it dude bahubali dude everyone's seen bahubali is a work of art have you seen bahubali asha you know because i've seen it asha not seen it dude bahubali is awesome <laughs> so i know you might think i'm making fun of it so i was also trying to make fun of it and i started watching it So the first 10 minutes I was just like oh this is stupid this is dumb 
but then slowly i got invested in it and it it is classic storytelling it is classic like you know like how your grandfather or grandmother would tell you a story or there was a king and then he was a noble king and then suddenly someone attacked the kingdom and then he had to fight for his kingdom so like it's a very classic child like storytelling which hooks you and all the characters are like 100 they're not like at 40 or 50 they're 100 if they're angry six like spits coming out of their teeth if they're happy they they're happy and tears are coming out of their, like it's everyone's at 100 every scene has a twist every scene first scene opens with this is the diamond that has the powers to win us a war in that scene only he drops it and it breaks and you're like what every scene has a twist it's incredible it's super entertaining now that you can't go out and you have to watch something watch bahubali and watch back to the future and watch indiana jones if you haven't seen lagan see lagan also you both have seen lagan no ah oh, lagan i haven't seen good good that's good hey see kumlangi nights man i've been saying it for a while and see super deluxe not with the parents though so but like has some sex scenes and all parasite i thought i've been seen what's another movie that i would highly re- oh okay this is a niche one face off have you seen face off you've seen asha rubika not seen no of course go see some bts music video <laughs> nothing against bts but this generation what can you expect face off is john travolta and nicholas cage I'll tell you the plot, and logically, if I tell you the plot, you'll think I've ruined the movie. Trust me, that's just like one percent. The movie's theme is John Travolta is a cop, and Nicholas Cage is a criminal who's insane. And I forgot the main thing. So they have to get something from Nicholas Cage's brother. So what they do, John Travolta takes Nicholas Cage's face. and puts it on his face and goes to meet nicholas's kid's brother to get whatever the information out but what happens is nicholas cage wakes up from his sleep and takes john travolta's face and puts it and now he is a cop and he and he like destroys all the evidence that that john travolta became nicholas cage so no one believes him now and what happens watch the movie it's amazing because john travolta acts like nicholas cage which is like an insane person and he's having a blast and nicholas cage is acting like a normal person which is hilarious cuz nicholas cage doesn't know how to be a normal person and apparently when they were doing the movie nicholas cage uh said that when i took as a movie i forgot that i have to act like john travolta so i had to just be boring while john travolta had all the fun So there are scenes where John Travolta licks people's faces because that's what he thinks John uh, Nicholas Cage does. It's amazing. Just watch it. Self quarantine recommendation number five. Also watch F One Drive to Survive. Season two is out. I finished it. It's amazing. Have you seen F One Drive? To- oh my god! What up? A- oh my god! It's so great. I don't even like Formula One. <sighs> Such a good show. I think now they're just saying yes, so I don't get upset. <laughs> What if they not seen it? You can't cross check. If you cross check, it looks like you're being too anal. Anyway, thank you guys. I think that's uh, about it for this episode. Thank you so much for your questions and listening to it. You can listen to it on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts. There are people who still comment saying, "When will it come on Spotify?" Slap your face and then lick your palm. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. and gana and it's on iheart radio also why not stitcher also it's there everywhere check it out please write your questions to me on instagram or twitter or facebook or youtube using the hashtag sibilcan the next one will it happen where will it happen who knows But thank you for listening bye bye tata it's time for simple it's time